Now, this council has never debated, it's never come up, 15-minute cities, 20-minute neighbourhoods, 15-minute neighbourhoods. We've never debated it. We've never had it on the agenda. As far as I'm aware, it's not going to be put forward as an agenda item anytime soon. And I certainly think that it, it, in some contexts, it would, wouldn't really be something that this town would be big enough to even consider. Because, as somebody put on Facebook in response to this, there aren't many places you can walk to in the town. It don't take 15 minutes to get to. What I would say is that, that uh, it might be irrelevant, but I'm just saying this council has never, ever decided. There's never been on the agenda. So whoever was telling you that it was on the agenda tonight has misled you in the same way that you're misled by the list that apparently came from UK 100. And do you know that be this is a top-down operation. It's a massive agenda, multi-trillion dollar. They're not going to give in just because you turn and say, well, they're not having it. They, they want the whole globe covered in this. And they're not going to stop because we're dealing with cyber. OK, so look, I, I, um, I have the great honour and privilege of being the mayor of Glastonbury. I can tell you that Glastonbury Town Council... You put that flag up there now, didn't you? I tell you that Glastonbury Town Council is not doing 15-minute cities, 20-minute neighbourhoods or 15-minute neighbourhoods. I'm telling you that now in a public debate that's being screened on YouTube. Every one of our meetings is screened on YouTube. So if you want to you know, look at this again and hear me say it, this is not something that's happening here. And Mendip District Council have never signed up to 15-minute cities. What about Somerset? Do you know about that? Well, they haven't signed up to it, but as far as I'm aware, but um, I'm, I'm not a member of, of Somerset Council. There are two members of Somerset Council here. I'll just ask them quickly. I, I am the unit, a Conservative unitary councillor. There was some suggestion that this had been passed historically. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to the Conservative leader. I can literally, anyone that wants to look at my phone can see, and he said... I only heard of 15-minute cities yesterday, and I absolutely yeah, do well, not support them. I'm answering the question. Nonsense. So if you want to disbelieve him, you can write to him personally. Okay. I can tell you I asked him, and this is the answer he gave me. Don't have to shout. Well, I clearly do if you're going to try and shout me down when I'm speaking. Well, everyone's quiet. The lady was heckled. The lady was heckled. No bother, Sue. And I don't know, I'm sure Nick can speak for Lib Dems, but... Thank you. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite happy to speak for the Lib Dems on this one. And as far as I know, Somerset County Council has not uh, endorsed it. There was one, one of our members who seemed to recall a long time ago that the previous administration had done it, but he could be mistaken. It's quite easy. It's quite easy. Long, uh, long time ago, memory. We've got, we've got. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> so we have, we have an ex, we have an ex Somerset County Councillor here who would know, and uh, if Terry would know. I can tell you that the first uh, I heard about 15-minute uh, cities was about I don't know fortnight ago, and I thought, what on earth is that all about? Uh, it certainly was not debated uh, at our last, at the uh, last millennium. Uh, so um, I, I can tell you that there's nothing at all to do uh, for, from the last millennium. Whether it's going forward now, no. I, I don't know. And we're being told no. So please, uh, please adhere to that. That's all I can tell you. Well, I, I guess the, the place to go and ask that question is to go to the meeting of the new unitary authority when it meets and ask them the question. But as far I... I, I I, I, I understand the sanctions people, but just, just to reiterate, this council has no plans and has never debated 15-minute cities, 20-minute neighbourhoods or 15-minute neighbourhoods. And, and that, that is the best... It, that, is, that, that is the best I can do as the mayor of the town is to tell you that. That's the truth of it. I... I Yes. The, the, if, yes. If there was... Well, yes, of course, any decision by any group can get overridden in certain circumstances, but as far as, far as this council is concerned, we're not doing 15-minute cities. Well, it means... If they said that Glastonbury had to do it, would you fight it? I think that Glastonbury would fight it, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs>
Well, we, we, represent, we represent the people of Glastonbury. If the people of Glastonbury don't want 15-minute cities, then we represent that, don't we? That's what we're here for. Yes, I right. so. Good. Well, if we don't, you know what to do next time there's an election, don't you? So, Sandy, would you like to speak now? <laughs> I got it. And uh, thank you, and thank you. Um, <laughs> um, well, Leela's covered um, a lot of what I was going to speak about, which is great because it, it it leads me to look at the bigger picture. And yes, um, it's great that that uh, I couldn't find anything in Mendip District Council about 15-minute cities, but it's important that we know about them, and it's important that we know about low, um, you know, the the, the low emission. Um, uh, zones that they, they want to implement in uh, smaller smaller towns. So what I'm just saying is um, basically this ideology isn't a, a grassroots, the whole 15-minute city ideology is not a grassroots initiative. It's actually a global initiative. Um, and it was brought in by um, Boris Johnson, uh, Michael Bloomberg and Carlos Moreno in 2004. Um, under the C40 Cities International uh, organization, which Sadiq Khan is now the chairman. Uh, contrary to propaganda, it's not a grassroots initiative, yeah, I've said that, but a top-down global plan under UN Agenda 21 2030 um, to uh, really roll out the 17 sustainable goals under net zero. Um, and uh, I know that all the green people here are comfortable with net zero, but if you understood the longer-term impl implications of net zero, and I've put, I've given you all the absolute zero document, and I hope you'll, you'll read it because that coloured bit shows you what is to be achieved by 2030. And that means no flying out of U the UK, no ships out of the UK, um, no cars at all, um, and no, um, you know, all wood burners to be ripped out of every home and every gas appliance to be ripped out of every home by 2025. Now, that is a government document, UK fires, absolute zero. And this is where we're heading for in net zero. We will literally be imprisoned on our own island. And I, you know, this is, this is what this top-down global control is all about. You think it's a green agenda to actually save the planet. It is not. It was implemented at the Earth Summit in 1992 by a bunch of oil billionaires, crooks. And I, I, seriously, and all of you, bless you, all of you, bless you, are trying to save the planet and you've been hoodwinked. I was in the Green, Green Party in the 1990s. I left, I was a member of the Ecology Party. I left because it got taken over. It became a Trojan horse for the technocratic agenda that I'm talking about, Agenda 2030. And I tell you what, they planned this from the 1970s. It's a long-term agenda, and I, I, I would love to be able to give, the, give all of you a presentation. I've been on this for 15 years, and I've been giving talks all over the world about this um, via YouTube everywhere, because I'm passionate about it. I've impoverished myself doing this. So I just want you to just hear me out. We're living now in what's known as a, well, what's coming is, is, is what's known as a zero trust world. So whether you know it or not, the digital ID is coming. Now, this is a big thing for everyone to understand. Digital ID is really the, the way the government will actually have all your data in one place. And they're bringing this in by December this year. This is really serious. And then they want the CBDCs after that, the central banking digital currencies. Now, this has got nothing to do with being green. It's a it's big business. It's massive business because underpinning this whole agenda are capital in literally um, capitalist stakeholders. Now, this is what's worrying, is that this whole green agenda is based on top-down control of us, we the people. And unfortunately, people who literally glue themselves to buildings, bless them, they've got their best intention, our best intentions at heart. They're, they're barking up the wrong tree. They're actually supporting the people who want to imprison us. Well, it, it's commuta com, com, you know, commutarianism, call it whatever you like. But either way, it's, it's, not, it's not anything about our rights and freedoms. It's about 
destroying our rights and freedoms. And, and you know, Ian, you're a, you're a butcher. Look down that list. By, by 2030, they want to get rid of meat and lamb and everything. You know, this is ludicrous. This is, and this is all being done without our consent. All of this is in place. And, and the zero trust world means that you will not be able to, they're getting rid of VPN. You will not be able to open your computer or any other um, you won't be able to access your bank account, your health records, anything, or even go into a hospital without your digital ID. Your digital ID will be unlocked by your facial recognition. And in that process, you'll be data harvested. Your, your data will be harvested from all your, your, from your digital ID. Every bit of your information will be on there. That is being sold to stakeholders on the blockchain by non-fungible tokens. I don't know if you understand all this, but this is actually your data is being sold on the blockchain or it will be and this is a form of currency this form of currency they will be using is the cbd is this is from the cbdc's from the central banking digital system every time you make a transaction everything's recorded tracked and traced and so they will know all your shopping habits your health records everything all that is sold so we are becoming a commodity us human beings will become a commodity and that is what the that's what the the, the whole global enslavement is about and we we have to be really careful because it's all tied up with the 17 goals and it's implemented by the United Nations. If you think the United Nations are our friend, you are wrong. <laughs> United Nations, oh sorry, I've lost <laughs> The United Nations and the World Economic Forum are working together and there's a document on that table which proves that the government are working alongside the, um, the World Economic Forum and they are bringing in drone technology which will be surveilling us from the air. In that document, a government document, it says they will have 900,000 drones flying in our skies by 2030. Well, we know they're here, but we're not seeing 900,000 of them. But, but you know, we, we, this, is, this is a bigger picture that we have to look at. And what I would really welcome is if we could have, I mean, this, the people in this room are worried about it. They know about it. Um, and, you know, if, if the councillors aren't aware of this huge pernicious march of AI technology, then we need to talk about it. This is Glastonbury. We can action things that will go out to the whole world. And that is the most most important thing, John, that whatever happens in Glastonbury reverberates around the whole world. You know that, I know that, we know that. We have to really take some sort of action and stop this, this absolute march of AI technology that is actually there to control us, enslave us, turn us into a commodity and restrict our movement and turn us into a prison planet because the digital ID will actually stop you. It's like the Chinese social credit system. System. You will be stopped from doing things or saying things if your credit score isn't right. They will be literally, our, our, our whole currency will be run, because they're getting rid of cash, the currency will be run by um, your, your carbon credits, which has all been set up to, to trick you, basically, into not moving out of your smart city apartment, have everything delivered by drone, and, and, and to you to experience life through a virtual reality headset, that's all in the pipeline too. So we need to really work out where... Is this a world that we want our children to grow up in and our grandchildren? And please, can we have an open and honest debate about this and about your green policies? Because it's not green and it's not democratic and it is actually working against us. It will enslave us. Your green policies will enslave us. It, obviously, we all want a beautiful um, you know, planet that isn't polluted. We can deal with that without the top-down control and the AI. And that's what we need to strive for, is a beautiful green planet, properly green, not astro turfed and and you know and we must understand the, the you know the whole thing with co2 in this because even i as a kid was taught that co2 is the gas of life it makes things grow if you talk about if you talk about net zero it's net it's zero you
it's zero me, it's zero plants, it's zero everything. And the, the, the you know, the carbon, it, the carbon, you know, CO2 rises from the sea, the most of it rises from the sea. It's not anth anthropogenic, it's not. And I want this to be looked at properly because all, everything has been skewed by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that was set up after the Earth Summit to actually skew all the data. And actually it was all found out in Climate Gate 2009, look it up, where they, they, the 179, 1,079 emails were hacked um, by an American, I think that's why Assange is in jail, but by the Americans um, actually finding out that the Hadley Research Center and the University of East Anglia were actually lying about the climate data, which actually sent us into the whole climate change thing. So, I, we know, we need to, and also the Club of Rome have admitted that they've created um, climate change to make humanity the, um, the, if you like, the scapegoat and make us the, the enemy. Uh, and that's in the first global revolution, page 115, uh, a very in interesting Club of Rome document, which actually uh, made up the bones of Agenda 2030, well, 21, which became Agenda 2030 in 2015 when it was endorsed by President Obama and the Pope in Rome. But anyway, that's all, that's all stuff that I've been doing for the last 15 years. I honestly have got all the background knowledge into it. And I really, really want this town to wake up so much. <laughs> it's been... Thank you. Okay. I have to say, I did talk about this 10 years ago over my kitchen table with you, John, and you thought I was a conspiracy theorist. So please think again. It's happening. It's actually happening now. And it's right, you know, it's coming at us like a railroad train. We need to do something and do something now about what's coming at us. Okay? Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye bye.